Hi, I'm Chris Lamb, and I'm a senior applied math major at Columbia University, working with Professor Kipping in the Cool Worlds Lab. Today, I'm going to ask the question, can we use computers to predict the existence of planets before we've even detected them? In a new paper by myself and Professor Kipping, we show that the answer is yes. While there are several ways we could have done this, we decided to use artificial neural networks, which draw inspiration from how biological brains are wired. Artificial neural networks, or neural nets for short, have applications as diverse as voice recognition, facial recognition, and vehicle routing. Okay, let's consider the weather to gain a little more insight on how neural nets work. We begin by building connections between a set of inputs and one or more outputs. In our example, the inputs could be today's temperature, humidity, and cloudiness, and our output would be tomorrow's temperature. In between our input and output layers are many intermediary layers called hidden neurons, which connect them through a network of complex interdependent relationships. To a certain degree, with more layers and more neurons in each hidden layer, we add increasing complexity to our network, allowing the neural net to explain ever more complicated patterns. So now that we've broadly defined what a neural net is, let's talk about how it works. Neural nets learn by being trained on facts that we show it. So in the beginning, our network is as unknowledgeable as a newborn baby, a blank slate. We train our network, showing it many, many examples of inputs, as well as the correct corresponding output. So in our weather example, that would mean showing our baby a catalog of daily temperature, humidity, and cloudiness data over many years, as well as the temperature of the following day. Each time, the neural network fine-tunes its interneuron connections, called synaptic strengths, in order to learn. Finally, the training wheels come off when the connections between our neurons are sufficiently well-tuned that the network can make good predictions on inputs for which we never told it the answer. In this Cool Worlds project, we wanted to see if neural nets can help us predict whether certain extrasolar systems harbor planets beyond what we can see. An upcoming space mission called TESS promises to find thousands of new planets, but since TESS aims to sweep the entire sky, it looks at each section for just 27.4 days at a time. This means that the majority of the planets TESS discovers will have periods less than half of 27.4 days. That is, we're going to end up with thousands of new planets with period less than 13.7 days. Such worlds will be close to their star, boiling hot as they whiz around it. From Kepler, however, we know that some short period planets have outer companions well beyond this period constraint. So the question becomes, which of the planets discovered by TESS are not alone? In our paper, which we've linked below, we trained an artificial neural network on the known planets from Kepler with period less than 13.7 days in order to predict which of these would have outer companions. After trying a range of different features, we decided to use the number of planets in each system within that 13.7 day window, the size of the largest planet in that window, and its orbital period. To test the neural net, we held data back and watched how well it could predict whether these systems had additional outer planets, a process known as cross-validation. And the result is, we think our neural net does a pretty good job. The upshot of this is that once we get Tess's observations, we can use telescopes to follow up on systems predicted by our neural net to have planets beyond Tess's scope, and this way, find twice as many planets as by following up on randomly selected systems. So think of this as a targeting exercise. What we've done has been to use math and some computing power to fashion a smarter way of deciding where to allocate our finite pool of telescopes for a better look at the thousands of extrasolar systems that TESS will find. Okay, so what is the future of artificial intelligence in astronomy? There have been astronomy applications of neural nets in the past, and we've linked a couple of them below. While neural nets are poised to streamline time and resource intensive tasks, what drawbacks could there be? Could we miss out on an anomalous system by predicting that it wouldn't have an outer planet? While we've obviously just scratched the surface, machine learning stands to change many of the ways we do astronomy. My name is Chris, and thanks for watching. We'll have additional resources linked in the description. If you like this video, please give us a like, and be sure to subscribe to the Cool Worlds channel. See you guys later. We begin by connect no on the known planets from Kepler with period with period blah, between a set of inputs and one or more outputs.